This is a quick overview on flow cells. We've got a couple of uh, YSI uh, probes in front of us. This is the DSS, and this one already in a flow cell is the Probe Plus. Uh, so these uh, water quality meters are standard. They come with uh, a cage. Uh, this one's attached, and this is the one that comes with the um, uh, Probe Plus. Uh, if you're not going to use a flow cell, then you would do well to use these cages to protect the probes. So typically you do that if you were uh, measuring in a stream or perhaps uh, in a bucket if you were uh, low flow sampling. Um, but we don't want you to use a bucket, we want you to use a flow cell for low flow sampling and there are a few good reasons why. Uh, one of them is that if you have this uh, in a bucket, uh, by the time you've filled up a 10 litre bucket, you've damped down your readings and actually um, uh, by using a, a smaller volume cell like this, uh, you can uh, monitor your readings uh, much more accurately and much more quickly as they respond. As you, as you pull water through the cell, uh, you will see the, the uh, parameters change and stabilise as uh, the monitoring well is, pur is perched. Uh, the other reason uh, for using a flow cell is that it's uh, closed like this and therefore you can uh, achieve a much more accurate dissolved oxygen reading as well, so that's quite handy too. Uh, so uh, what else do you need to know? Well, uh, you should know that we should be using the flow cell upright like this. Uh, we've actually supplied additional bases for these flow cells so they're easier to, to keep upright. Uh, one of the reasons uh, for that, uh, if you have it on its side like this, uh, is that perhaps you will not get um, uh, a correct reading from the probes. Uh, if you look in here, this one here, the conductivity probe, uh, requires a flow uh, through there, and if there is a, an air bubble or something, um, uh, then you're not going to get a correct reading. Uh, so better uh, upright. The other thing is also uh, these ports, um, if they get a little bit of water inside them, then that's going to uh, upset the sensors as well. Uh, and if you have the flow cell on its side, you've got more chance of forcing water into there, especially if there's a little bit of pressure uh, through this flow cell with, uh, with water coming in and, uh, and coming out. Uh, so how to put this all together? Well, I've just taken the cage off, so that's the first part. Uh, what I can do is I can put that um, onto the flow cell. I find it easier to do this uh, before connecting uh, the connectors. Uh, so just uh, twist that on. Be careful not to cross-thread it. Uh, but that's the flow cell uh, connected like that. Uh, then we've got a couple of different type connectors. Uh, one slightly bigger than the other. And uh, depending on what tubing you're going to use, uh, so those little connectors, they fit in like that uh, and the same like this as well. Uh, now whatever pump you use, you'll be connecting it to the bottom of the flow cell and then it will be uh, spooling out of the top. Um, typically if you're using a peristaltic pump, you'll be using a little bit of uh, silicon tube. Uh, some of the peristaltic pumps, we use quite thin tubing for that. This is uh, four by six millimeter, and that's not gonna fit onto um, this uh, connector. So actually, uh, I use a little bit of the silicon tubing that you'll use with the peristaltic pump and use that to connect. So one into the uh, polyethylene tubing, and then that's a much easier connection uh, onto the uh, onto the flow cell connector. So that's an easy way of doing it. Uh, if you are using a bladder pump, uh, typically the bladder pump will come with a slightly bigger sample tube. Uh, this is six by eight millimeter. This should fit directly onto this uh, flow cell, um, onto this connect connector. Uh, and that's fine. If you are using a, a geo sub pump, you might be using uh, this uh, tubing, this is uh, 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 10 by 12 millimeter tubing. Now that will fit directly onto uh, the larger barb, um, but there is a potential here. Now don't forget, if you're using a high flow pump like a geosub, uh, low flow through the cell, um, if you go high flow through this, you, you stand a chance of, again, uh, pressurizing the cell and um, uh, injecting water into those ports and then uh, that's not going to be happy. 
something else we can do, possibly. Um, so uh, there are some people who are using high flow pumps uh, like the GeoSub and the MP1 pump. Uh, they're purging high purge rates uh, and typically they'll pump that into a bucket. But if you want to use a flow cell, uh, you can tee off, uh, so use a connector and tee off uh, into the flow cell and, and just adjust the, the, t uh, the, the flow rate on the tap. There is another way of doing that, um, and we can do that with a knife uh, or a pair of scissors and just um, uh, make a little nick into the bigger tubing uh, and we'll just... Um, put a bit of smaller tubing in there. So there we go. So if you imagine um, this is the uh, tubing that's being high purged uh, from an MP1 or from uh, a GeoSub and then you're just teeing off and then you can put that back through the uh, bottom of the flow cell. So I can grab another connector. Um, there we go. And then this one uh, we can reconnect like so. There you go. There we go. Oop. So there's a few ways of doing that. It's always handy to have a few extra bits of tubing like this uh, uh, with your kit so that you've got a few options of how to connect it. Remember, uh, when you have uh, achieved uh, stability on your water quality meter, um, you're taking the sample not from the, uh, not after the flow cell, but before the flow cell, so that then you will disconnect um, uh, before the flow cell. Uh, and you'll take your sample as, as directly from the well as possible, um, uh, so not through here. Uh, one other thing that is quite useful, so if you're looking for uh, the stability on your water quality meter on the Pro Plus here, if you press the left or the right button, it will actually give you um, a, uh, a, a real-time graph and you can watch your parameters uh, stabilize on that, that's kind of useful. Uh, also, probably now's a good time to uh, uh, remind you where you can use the logging function. Typically, already it's here, it says start logging. Uh, I don't know how it's set up right now, but if I press the enter button, um, I can do start now, the interval, it says uh, 15 seconds. I think I can change that as well here. Um, so that's kind of handy and that will uh, log uh, uh, away well, uh, instead of having to um, write the numbers down in a book.